Good morning. It is spot on 10 o'clock GMT. I'm George. Nice to see you all there and a happy new year to you all. And let's hope it's going to be a, a prosperous new year for us. Uh, guys, if you can just um, confirm again that I've got my jack plug, plugged in and you can hear me and we will get started. Ah, that's great. Fine. Okay, guys. Right. Well, let's just, um, let's just reacquaint ourselves with the basics. Now, um, football players, you may ask, uh, what on earth has football got to do with trading? Well, it's got a lot to do with it in that, um, football players, what do they do when they, uh, when they go along for a training session, for a basic training session? You know, you occasionally see these, uh, TV shots of them dribbling the ball dribbling the ball. Well, you know, why would they want to be practicing dribbling the ball? Because it's one of the most basic and most important aspects of being a footballer. They have got to effectively dribble a ball. Now, <clears throat> support and resistance is one of the most basic aspects of trading. And it's one of those that can quite often be forgotten. And when we're sort of thinking about uh, interest rates, we're wondering about the latest economic announcement, we're trying to second guess what that announcement means, then we can so often lose the wood for the trees. And we've got to come back to basics and just look at things like support and resistance and be aware of where they are and what it actually means. And one of the big problems with uh, all sorts of trading is that we overanalyze overanalyze. And if there's one new New Year message that I'm going to certainly uh, tell myself about and pass on to as many people as possible, that is, don't think. <laughs> just do. Just, just do it based on what you see on the charts. If you're thinking too much, if you're overanalyzing and you'll start to lose track of what's actually going on in the markets, forget the thinking, just come back to the charts. Right, guys. Well, let's um, let's go look at uh, the basics of support and resistance. Now, bear with me for a second. Um, I guess one or two people out there are probably yawning at this point, saying, "What is this guy talking about? We know all about this." But let's just reacquaint ourselves with the uh, the basics of what is meant by first of all price resistance. Now, right up here, we've got a very very strong black line, and we've got a beautiful perfect double top formation. What happens with a double top? Well, it pops up to an area where price then comes down. It bounces down from there. Now, we haven't a clue why price is bouncing down from there, but the fact that it does. And then, what does it do? It tests that level again. And if it does not pass through that level, then it is said that there is major price resistance there. Okay? And then price sort of backs away, and the chances are that it could now move into a downtrend. The alternative, of course, is that it could go pushing on up through. But for the moment, let's just stay with it being a double top, pushing it down. Now, support, then, is exactly the opposite. And exactly the opposite is where price then tests a level. Or in the region of, I mean, this one just happens to be perfect, spot on to the very, very pit. But uh, things are seldom like that. It's going to be a few pips above, some pips below, etc. in the region of. But quite simply, all we're looking at here is an area where price has tested, in this case, the lows, and it's decided that it's going to move on up. Right, so there we are. That's the basics of major support and resistance. Let's go look now at minor support and resistance. Right, well, let's kick off then with uh, resistance first of all. One at the top, again, we've got this very, very strong black line. The price has tested this area and it's bounced up. Now, this could just be a continuation long-term downtrend with a whole load of these zigzags just sort of running along. And what happens? Well, price then tests. It tests. The test did not bounce up. There were not the buyers there. There were not the buyers, but there were just continued sellers. 
And as there were not enough buyers there, what happened to it? Well, price just meandered on through. Now, what then so often happens is that price will move down a little way, and then it'll bounce on up, and it'll now do a retest of that previous that previous area, which was a little bit of support, and then on down it comes. Right, down to the one at the bottom, <clears throat> and what have we got here? Once again, we've got a black line. Price decides that uh, it's going to just do a little move away from that area, but then price pivots round, turns the corner, and then shoots on up and just slices straight the way through. Now, the preceding slide, there would have been sellers coming in at that point. The sellers just are not in evidence here. The buyers have got it all to themselves. So that's where you get a breakout. Now, as you know, I hate trading breakouts. Absolutely hate them with a passion. You know, I do on occasion where I've got a really, really strong runaway trend, but the problem with trading breakouts is that the stop needs to be under a reaction low. And after a breakout, that tends to be too far away, too far away with a high risk. So what I like to do is wait for the inevitable, the inevitable pullback, and that's exactly what we've got where price comes back to test, test the area of that previous high, and then price pops on up. So there we go. That's the ideal buying opportunity as soon as price turns the corner and then starts to move on up. Right, okay, let's move on. Now, <clears throat> let's just look at uh, various areas where there's likely to be support and resistance. Right, number one, old support and resistance, where clearly you can see prices move from a particular level. Okay? And what very often then happens is that Support and resistance will very often become resistance and support, as we've just seen. There can be trend lines and channels where price comes to the top of a trend channel, finds resistance. What does it then do? It retreats down to the bottom, and it then just bounces off a lower trend line, or indeed a channel. Round numbers, all important, particularly things like cable, things like the euro, bounce off uh, the main decade and uh, century numbers, fib levels, all important, waves, wave completion, and of course you don't want to do this in isolation. You need to look at uh, other time frames as well. Right, so let's just have a little look then at uh, an actual chart. Well, here we are. We've got, um, this is the euros daily. Uh, each one of these candles is, is one full day. And let's just work along from the left over here. What have we got? We've got price that just decided that it was still in this downtrend, and it popped up for a, a little while, and then it decided to pop on down. It tested these lows. It tested these lows. And the tail, look at that, the tail of the candles just pushed through the low, but the bodies did not. All important. And of course, that's left behind a nice long tail candle, followed by harami okay an inside candle and then over here get yet another inside candle and then it breaks and up it goes price then sliced through that resistance level shot on up eventually did not go any higher why did it why did it not go any higher haven't a clue haven't a clue not bothered about worrying about the fundamentals, etc., but the mere fact that it just stopped at this level, which was adjacent to just above an important round number. Anyway, it then set up a nice little trading range, found some support, bounced around in that area for a little while, and then down it came. Where did it come down to? It came all the way down to this level, which was previous resistance. Bounced on up. Up it went. Where did it pause? It falls where there was previous support. Resistance has now become support. On up again, where did it find resistance? In the region of an old high. Okay, 
very, very important areas. Old highs, old lows. Pricing came down. Where did it find some support? At a round number and at a resistance level. Well, well, well. Just look at that. Old highs, old lows, old support, old resistance. And then, of course, price eventually broke out and it shot on up. And, uh, you know, subsequently, that area right down there could well have been uh, support. It was, as a matter of fact. Right, so there we are. Support, resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance. Here we go. Cable. <clears throat> Not daily chart this time. We're down to the 89 tick chart. And what's happening with the 89 tick chart? Well, we've got this beautiful, look at that for head and shoulders. Who said classic patterns never appear on the... On, on Forex charts, they most certainly do. And the predicted area where this is likely to go to is taking the depth of the uh, depth of the pattern. Well, price broke out and it followed through. It, it did the prediction and more. It did one and a half times the prediction, shot on down, but then it started to bounce around. What did it do? It set up a reverse head and shoulders. <laughs> and then that one moved on up but just look at these areas where price found at this self same area of the inverted shoulders okay it found support moved on up where did it find resistance well let's just take that blue line looking left is very useful look left find other areas where price has been maybe popped down to that was a support area previously it's now resistance. Double top, pushes on down, did not collapse, worked up enough momentum, pushed on up through. Ah, oh, where does it go through? Go to right up to that old neckline. And then it just declined on down and found support just down here. Right, guys. Well, that is the basics of support and resistance. And... Uh, Let's just look on that as being one of these uh, little sessions of doing a bit of dribbling with the football. <laughs> or we just sort of get reacquainted with these things. Yeah, you know, heck, we've all been uh, we've all been enjoying the Christmas festivities. Just got to just got to get ourselves back on track again. Right now, let's just look at a little. Yeah, yeah, just love these uh, these ranges. Right, what do we got? We got cable. This is a relatively narrow range. It's the 89 tick chart, okay? Each single candle is 89 ticks. Dependent upon the time of day, this just happens to be an overnighter. Then, mm, more or less equates to something like a three-minute chart overnight. Uh, during the main session, probably about half that, probably about uh, a minute and a half for around about 89 ticks varies of course depending upon the activity that there is but that's not the point of looking at this what we're actually looking at is where we've had a downtrend now you know, what is a what is a downtrend well it's dead simple it's this sequence of lower highs and lower lows okay um, anyone can work that one out lower highs and lower lows eventually price does not go any lower all right so it got down there to 52.35 stopped going any lower, and it actually broke the downtrend line. See that very neat little line there? It's picked up two, three points, price subsequently going lower, but then price broke it. Now, what that actually means is that price is now officially in a range. So as soon as one of the preceding lower highs gets broken on the upside, it's, it's in a range, okay? The trend has actually stopped for now. Just look at that resistance area. That resistance area, all the way down the line there, picks out three points based on a previous high. Okay, so we've got resistance, resistance, resistance. Then we've got this support area where price just bounced up from. And, you know, the trader could have been forgiven there for looking at this, seeing what was going on, price pop down below 5240 region pop down below there did not go below the all important 35 level and then it bounced on up in fact i would have bought this 
particularly on that nice engulfing there, because that's, that's very much looking like a nice little saucer bottom. And then on up it would have gone, and down it came, and eventually then it just broke through the supports to continue the old range. Now, you wouldn't want to trade this range because it's just not wide enough. I mean, it's 52.55 to 52.35. Well, you know, how much money can you make out of 20 pip move when you're going to be consuming a fair old bit of that with slippage and with spread? So there's just not enough scope to trade that. If it was 100 pips or even 80 pips, then, yeah, you know, that would have been well worth giving it a go. Right, now then, trend lines. Just take a little... ...glance at this. In a minute, when it appears. Should be on your screen right now. So, what we've got down at the bottom here is, is volume. <coughs> and up here, this is the two-minute chart of the JAPI. USD, JPY. And the USD, JPY is in an uptrend. It is trending up. And what tends to happen then in these uptrends, it gets slightly carried away and it comes back for support. Where does it find support? Well, you see this area there where we've got 100%. That just happens to be where price previously was being resisted. So there we are. We've got a resistance area. Price breaks above, comes back for a correction. And at that level, it finds the support and then it starts to move on up with the sequence of higher lows. Where is the best place to buy? Well, it's got to be just after these higher lows form. You don't want to be buying at the highs. You don't want to buy at the highs after the major breakouts. We get another major breakout here. And then price corrects. Well, it corrects with the right sort of candles Nice little harami, break on the upside, buy there, stop underneath. Okay, looked a little bit under threat, but then price just moved on up. So all the way, we've got a nice little trend forming, and price just keeps coming back to that level and just bounces off it. So there we go, we've got a nice little trend line, and that's showing us the support and resistance. Volume, guys, just... Um, not too bothered about volume, but where you've got a rising trend, you want to see gradually rising volume. That's what we've got. Right, now let's go look and see what else we've got. Right, Fibonacci. Fibonacci is really quite useful. Now this just happens to be a 15 minute chart of the Australian. And let's look at this support and resistance. We've got an, got an uptrend over here on the left. Okay, The uptrend comes to an end. With a false break, by the way. We're going to look at false breaks in just a second. Price then moves on down. Does not quite break the previous, the previous low, which would have been a higher low. But then what does it do? It pops back up and it finds resistance at a 50% retracement level. So we put the Fib grid on, place it between the preceding, okay, the preceding lower high and the, and the current low, measure it, price so often will turn it a Fib point. Down it goes. It moves on down, bounces on up. That's another one, by the way, another little Fib point based on the previous lower high. Then it moves on down. A measured move will pick out very, very often an area where there's going to be support. Right down here where my pointer is right now, there was support. Now, we've got nothing else to look at here, haven't got the wider time frames, haven't got any further evidence. But what we have got is that this swing, this last major swing, is exactly the same length as the preceding major swing. A measured move. So where you can see a measured move, and you can see where the predicted end is in that area, then look out. 
that's just where price might want to reverse. And then just look at the rest of this chart. Price then did bounce up from the end of that measured move, shot on up into this region of a 50% retrace of the main measured move swing, came down 50% again, popped up. The Aussie is so good at FIB, real good FIB trading market is the Aussie. Market is getting a little bit worried about the Aussie at the moment with all those Queensland uh, Queensland floods. Right, there we are. Price then bounced on up. And where did it do? Yet another measured move and also up to the 78.6 before it decided that it's going to move on down. So there you go, guys. That's linking together some FIB standard measured moves with what's going on with the trend. <clears throat> All right, well, here we, here we go. This is the uh, best currency in the world, the yellow stuff, gold. Right, what do we got here? Well, we've got another little measured move, an ABC move, and look at that, a perfect ABC. The predicted level, that C level, which just happens to be 100% of the A move, okay, all right, exactly the self same distance is this move from B to C. And where does it come down to? It comes down to this area where there was prior price action, which also just happens to be the 78.6 FIB. Really important area. Any of you guys ever been to Rockhampton, where the worst of the floods are? Right, now then, let's just look at this. This is cable, 30-minute chart. 30-minute chart. So we, over here on the left, we've got an uptrend. Then price decided it wasn't going to go any higher. Set up a beautiful little multiple reversal. Then it came down. Found a little bit of support just here. Then it popped up to that level. And, well, you know, this has moved from a very consistent uptrend, higher lows, higher highs. The whole thing reversed into lower lows, lower highs, down, 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 down. Got one or two significant little bounces along the way, and then on down it went. On down it went. Well, let's just go and have a look at the waves. Yeah, we've got some real nice waves. So where you've got a series of waves that you can actually quantify. And what so often happens with a five-wave Elliott move is that wave five is usually the shortest wave, but it's also very often exactly the self-same length as wave one. Where you actually see that, then just keep in mind that that could be an area where there just might want to be a reversal. Just might want to be a reversal. And just look at that bounce on that wave four, just shy of where the support was at the end of wave one. Right, well, we're linking together a few things there, guys. Right, well, there we go. Now, it looks very much as if we haven't got any residents of Rockhampton in today, and I guess that they've all sort of left town I mean, Rock is a, a very, very, I mean, it's an interesting place to go, but my goodness me, is it a quiet town? Is it a quiet town? Right, so let's just consider then false break reversals. False break reversals, all important, because the, so, so often we see price do a nice little breakout. What does it then do? Completely reverses. So this is what goes on. Price breaks out of a trading range, might well make a new high or a new low. Then what happens after that? Well, price just stops moving in that direction with the breakout, and it reverses, and usually very, 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 very quickly indeed. Catches out traders, and they're left scratching their heads, wondering, you know, just what is going on and what's going to happen next. So those traders then who, who bought the breakouts, that so many traders do, 
they're going to have their stops taken out. And they are going to be very, very unhappy happy people. And after their stops have been taken out, they will then probably jump on the other side of the market and really fuel the move, really get it, get it going. Now, psychological, uh, those traders will probably need to go into therapy or at least lie in a darkened room for a while until they can work out quite what is going on with the market. And it, it's, it's damaging to them because, you know, the more analysis that those traders have, have, have worked through, the more sort of opinionated they have become about that breakout and where that was going to send price and how much money and thousands of dollars they were going to make out of it, and that hasn't actually happened, they've got to come to terms with all of that. They've got to come to terms with all of that. So too much analysis, guys, very damaging for the psyche. Right, so what we're going to be looking for, we're going to look for evidence, false break evidence, FB evidence, and trade the 2B rule. Now, anyone who doesn't know what the 2B rule is, it's a dead simple rule, and I would recommend to you trader Vic Victor Sperendio, brilliant guy, very straightforward uh, book that he wrote in his years as a fund manager on Wall Street. Nothing to do with currencies. The guy was a stock trader, but this one works a real charm. You sell the low or the high of the breakout candle. Anyway, let's just look at one or two of these. Right, what do we got? We've got this little um, this little high, and price decides to do a breakout. It does a breakout on the downside, then it does a breakout on the upside, but both of those are false ones because price immediately goes back to where it actually started from. Okay. Technical buy and sell stops then are most often placed just above or below previous highs and lows. So one of the questions posed earlier on was um, what are false breaks all about? Is it blatant manipulation or is it just the natural sort of ebb and flow of the markets where you know, traders are testing highs and testing lows to see if there are any buyers and sellers out there? Well, in reality, it can be a bit of both. Now, more often than not, traders will look at an area where Joe Soap Public is most likely to put their stops. And they are most likely to be putting their stops just below all right, previous lows and just above previous highs. So there's a great temptation for market makers, in the case of stocks and large funds, in the case of Forex, to obtain either more or less of their stock or currency by running the stops. So if you can imagine just down here, that if there's an expectation on behalf of this fund, or indeed this, this big, big player, or indeed this, this large bank that can actually see the order flow where they've got clients saying that they want to be buying this currency, so they know that price is going to be going up. They're privy to that in information. But for their own account, they don't actually have very much. If they can engineer a whole load of sellers to come out of the woodwork, okay, who will actually sell their stock to them, then there's that great temptation to run the stops, okay? So this is what happens. They will push out into the market a lump of currency. That'll get a slide going. They'll push out some more just to get it down below a level. And once that happens, all of those people who were long previously will be stopped out. Their positions will be closed. Who is going to be buying their currency but those nice people who pushed price on down to hit those stops, okay? Then once they're loaded up, then they can start to push those orders through the market that their client funds have sort of pushed into them, and away they go, just coattailing on the back of the move. 
So that, that's one scenario. The other scenario is, of course, that genuinely nobody quite knows what, where the order flow is. So what are they going to do? They're going to be just probe these areas just to see if there are any genuine buyers or sellers in there. And sure enough, that's what they actually find. Just down here, they find that, there, yes, there are genuine buyers because price keeps on going up. Right, okay, now let's just look at one or two little trend lines and bits and pieces. Trend lines very, very useful. Look at this thing. We've got a beautiful five-wave move. Wave one, wave two, corrects back, whoosh, up for a wave three, wave four, correction, follows the rules, does not pop down below the top of wave one, and then finally wave five ends up, all right, ends up being a fairly small wave. All right. So right up at the top here, if we put a line, we'll find that this little lump of price action is all a false break. Now, just combining this with what we were looking at a bit earlier on, where you've got a five-wave move, it's gone a substantial distance already. What are the odds of it going substantially higher, yet again, after a five-wave move? Well, they're considerably reduced. Link that up with the average true range of uh, a market. This one just happens to be cable. And just look at this one, where it's gone from this level. Well, it's gone through around about 100 pips. Now, when you consider that the ATR, the average true range for cable, is around about 140, 50 pips, then how much more expectation is there that it's going to go up for another 100 pips? Very, very, very unlikely. Very reduced odds. Very, very reduced odds indeed. And so consequently, what do we find? You start to get bearish candles for me. You've got shooting star. Harami, Harami breaks. We've got a trend line that gets broken. What, what do we want to do? Well, you see this breakout, okay? What we want to do, we want to get short on this thing as the Harami breaks. Now, the confirmation comes that when we look at whichever candle, and this is the 2B, we've got a breakout candle. Okay, the confirmation comes where the breakout candle, and it's that green candle, okay, green candle. When price comes down through the base of the breakout candle, then the odds of this move, this up move being over, and that being a genuine false break reversal, okay, the odds have dramatically increased, okay, and on down it comes. Now, the base of the breakout candle is, is all important. So, there we go. That's a nice little false break. And, yeah, you know, there are other opportunities here on the Harami breaks to get short. Right, okay, now let's just look at this one. Right, this time we're over to a 240-minute uh, chart of uh, cable. We've got this beautiful, beautiful little sort of range. Right, 240 minutes. Every single candle is 240 minutes, okay? That is four hours. That is four hours. So we've got a very, very clearly defined tradable range this time from 162.100, uh, 105, and where does it go to? It goes all the way up to 66. That is a tradable range, okay? Short at the, short at the highs, long at the lows. But what I'm really interested in is what happened as price broke out through that round number resistance at one. 66. Well, it shot up. It certainly shot up all right. Went up for 100 plus pips. But then it just reversed. Right. Two bits of evidence that this is a false break reversal. Number one is that price has retreated from a round number. Number two, a candle is a shooting star. Okay. That is a shooting star if ever there was one. 
Okay, so we've got two bits of evidence now that this could just be a complete and utter false breakout. Right, we haven't got it in there, but if we just took a line picking up these two higher lows, that line is going to get broken. Third bit of evidence. Okay, fourth bit of evidence, the breakout candle, which is this little green candle, okay, this little green candle, price breaks through the base of it. We've now got four bits of evidence. Four bits of evidence. Right, now if the trader still can't make uh, his or her mind up whether this was a false break or not, well, you can wait for the inevitable pullback. And that's what happened. We get wave one coming down, wave two. It bounces as it pivots round the corner and moves on down. What do we got there? We've got an excellent selling opportunity. An excellent selling opportunity. Right, then price moves on down with five waves, all right, got five waves completed, and based on this entire chart that we're looking at, price came down to a really important round number at 78.6% fib. What more evidence do you want there that this little move has come to an end? But look at that, all the way down, 700 lovely pips, look at that. Look at that. Lovely jubbly, as Dale Boy would say. So, there we are. That's taken a little look at those uh, those false breaks. Right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so, this is where we've just got to accept that a previous move may well fail and form an FBR. We've got to have the mindset of looking at alternative scenarios. That wonderful American word that some people absolutely hate that word. For some reason, I really don't know why. But you've just got to look at the alternatives. Always have a fail-safe plan. Never, never look at a move and say, oh, yeah, 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 this one's going to go to the moon and we're going to make thousands out of it. Whenever you're thinking like that, the chances are it's going to do exactly the opposite to you and end up going to be a loser. So, always accept that something is not going to work out in the way that you think it might. Gather the evidence, then, of potential failure from a break to a fib line, maybe a resistance zone. You've got the candle confirmation, as we've just seen. There may be a wave confirmation, could be trend line breaks, etc. Enter really, really, really early. Do not wait, 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 wait for confirmation. By the time you've got absolutely every single 100% bit of confirmation, it's too late. It's too late. The risk will have gone sky high. So get in early. Get in early. So that if you're wrong, you can get out quickly. And of course, you know, you're going to miss a number of these. Some of them will happen so flipping quickly that there's no chance of, uh, of catching it. Right, let's look at another one. Cable, two minute chart. What did price do? Right, well, this is, um, this is where I tend to do quite a lot of my trading, which is uh, first thing in the morning. UK time, that is. Around about six o'clock in the morning. Well, Right here, this is before 6 o'clock, it's around about a quarter to 6 in the morning. What do we get? We got price that did a beautiful little breakout. Lovely little breakout of the Asian range high. So what did it do? It decided that it wasn't going to go any higher. Now, we were given a nice little engulfing candle. Price then came down below the base of the breakout candle, okay? That's following the 2B rule. And then it just moved on down. Well, it moved on down, but then it bounced up. Where did it bounce up to? Ah, well, it bounced up to that old resistance line. And then it popped on down. And then it moved down for a nice little run. What did it then do? It bounced all the way back up to this old level of prior price action. Okay. This area of resistance, 
Note that it's not just a very clear single line, but it's in a band of price action. And then we've got the candles, which are giving the evidence that it's not going to go any higher. Shooting star, da di da price moved on down, and eventually we've got the evidence with a harami that, whichever way it's going to break out, suggests that's where it's going to go next. Ah, there we are. That's all marked up there. So, what have we got? Got the false breakout. Okay, in gulfs. We could go short very, very quickly there. Okay, number two, there's a little Harami break candle right there. There's that engulfing shooting star candle, another entry there. And at number three, assuming that the next candle breaks that Harami, we got yet another opportunity to go short. And so on. Trend just moved on down, 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 down down and eventually it came to an end with a pretty convincing Haller candle right okay guys now it's always a useful thing to uh, oh Jack sorry I, I missed that yeah we'll 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 get on to that in just a second right well this is the Swissy USD CHF Amazing market just at the moment, by the way. This is absolutely going potty. The Swiss, and particularly the Euro Swiss. Anyway, that's a little aside. What we've got over here on the left, 15 minute chart. Okay, so we can see the morning's price action, but also the previous day. And it can be seen that on this previous day over here, centered on 104400, okay. There's a whole stack of price action. So, if price gets into that region, then the chances are it's going to find it potentially, potentially heavy going. Well, over to the five minute chart, and don't worry about the actual trades here, but what actually happened was that price did go up in the middle of the night there, three o'clock in the morning, UK time, and it tested this area right bang in the middle of the prior price action. But then it came down for the support, made it look as if price was going to move on up. It then did the breakout, but that proved to be a false breakout. Okay, so price moved on up. Then we got some candle evidence there with long tail candles that just maybe all was not well. And that was where it was attempting to push up into that region of prior price action that you could only see by looking at a longer time frame. Okay. Well, price did come down. That was the breakout candle. Price did break down, but it didn't go all the way down. That's the breakout candle, that blue candle. Well, it only really gets confirmed once the base of that gets taken out. And what did it do? It attempted, it attempted yet again to go higher, but was pushed down well and truly and at number two there, that is just telling us, sorry guys, I lost my pointer for a moment, come on back, there we are. At number two, completely engulfs a preceding candle, and then subsequently price breaks that low of the breakout candle, has a little rally back for another opportunity to get in, and then price just collapsed on down. Right, okay guys, well, there we go, that's the um, that's the theory of support resistance and false breakouts. Right, now then, guys, bear with me half a mo. I just need to get my trade station on the go, and let's see what we can see. What we can see. Right, bear with me a second. All oh, right, amazing. Yeah, we got a chart back. Got a chart back. Right, Jack, you, you're asking about um, uh, British Pound USD. To what support do you see it retracing? And is the breakout of this morning a false break? Right, well, interesting question that. I always like to go from the macro to the micro. So I like to look at the, uh, the longer term, uh, which is this daily chart, and then just um, try to sort of base, um, base my sort of initial 
simple analysis on that. And what I'm actually seeing here is that the price action over the um, uh, over the last few days, the price action yesterday, uh, albeit was a limited trading session. Okay, limited trading session left the line behind and Harami. Okay, I like Haramis. I like Harami breaks, and that's exactly what we've actually seen this morning. Now, cable is very, very good at um, creating the impression that it's going to go one way, and it does exactly the opposite. Now, I just brought that blue line, um, there we are, down to a neckline area. Now, it's entirely possible that we've got a head and shoulders in the making, but it's also entirely possible that it's going to be a failed head and shoulders. And cable is very, very good at uh, creating um, failed head and shoulders patterns. So. You know, it's entirely possible that we could see much, much higher levels here. We've just got to follow on with the price action. So, number one, the Harami break is, uh, is quite good news. We can then go down to <clears throat> a 240-minute chart. 240-minute chart immediately shows that there is, let's just use this blue line, where price is right now. It's at an area where it is starting to find a little bit of, uh, a little bit of resistance. Now, there was a predicted level that was picked out this morning of price going to 156 and uh, it's popped up a little bit from there and the next stop was most likely going to be 156.50. Well, this blue line where price has pushed to this morning is exactly adjacent to where price found resistance previously. So based on everything we've just been looking at, then this is an area where price is going to find it a little bit difficult to move ahead from. And as we can see, this has been an area which, uh, just going back to here, we found uh, a little bit of prior price action. So, important area. Also, I mentioned um, about the distance that uh, price has actually moved. Well, the low of the day was 154.50, just about. It's moved through around about 130 odd pips for an ATR of about 100. 50 pips, okay? You can just see that on the chart of the uh, of the daily there, okay? Got the ATR indicate 150 pips. So the expectation that this is going to go winging its way for another 100 pips today has got to be has got to be um, severely reduced odds of that. Now the question was, are we likely to see some form of correction? Well, yeah, you know, we could well do. And one of the most useful things that I actually find for, uh, for, for doing this, for just trying to find those areas where price uh, could correct to, is Fibonacci. So just pop the grid on, and this grid then can pick out areas where price is likely to come back to. Now, the fact that price where it's actually got up to at this 156.35 didn't quite make 50 in the region of that previous high suggests that there ought to be a correction. So some form of sideways price action, I guess, is highly likely. I would then be looking for turning points at these fib areas. And it's well worth just considering that the 50% mark, let's just put a, put a little line across just about there, is in the region of this bit of prior price action, and it's also just above this area where we've seen, okay, where we've seen price resistance previously. So this would be the most likely area for price to crack back into before maybe finding support and then moving on. Now, you know, it's all very well looking at that for a bit of analysis, but what if the trader hadn't actually got in yet? Would you want to be buying at these high levels? Well, probably not. Probably not. If price came back to this level, then yeah, great. There could be the potential for a nice little buying opportunity down there. Once the overbought nature of this market has actually unwound somewhat. Anyway, guys, I've uh, I've actually gone over time, and um, Jack, I hope that answered that question uh, for you. 
If any of you guys want to pick up on any of these points, want to drop me an email, keep in contact with me, then my email address is about to appear in the bar at the bottom there, george at clickevents.co.uk. Guys, it's been great to be with you on this um, first full trading day of the new year, and um, wish you well. Look out for those false breakouts and make lots of pips in 2011. Bye for now, guys.